the place that feels like home to the player. In between every tactical mission, the player returns to XCOM HQ. This is the nerve center. This is where the player makes all of the strategic decisions of the game. We had this nice long period where we just discussed what do we want to do. And when we started talking about the, the base, we would always refer to it as the ant farm, I think, uh, and, and Jake would talk about it in terms of like, you know, it wouldn't be like a diorama. And so I was going more along the diorama path where we were trying to make it um, a little more horizontal, a little bit more like a level. And we explored a bunch of different options with that, and it never really worked. And then one day, my lead tech artist and my lead character artist came in and they said, what if we actually did make this an ant farm? Like, let's mock something up, show me what you, you know what you think we're talking about. And so they put something together pretty quickly. Jake and I walked in there and took a look at it, and as soon as we saw it, it was like, that's really cool. The idea was to take this base and make it feel like a living diorama where the player felt the soldiers that he interacted with uh, had a home. Uh, on top of that, the player customizes the base. It's not a static experience. The player chooses how to excavate the earth beneath the base and add new facilities. And those facilities have big impacts on gameplay. Mission control is really important because it, it, that's where the geoscape is and that's the heart and soul of the game. That image of earth hanging as a jewel in the universe, it's very iconic because that's what the player's protecting. In a lot of ways, that's the character of, of XCOM. The entire base was sort of designed around the geoscape. So we started with the globe, and then from there, everything kind of spoked out. You start out with the, the hub or the ant farm. It, it's, it's a really cool base that the player has complete control over. So you have these static rooms that you start with. We mentioned mission control. Then you also have engineering. You can build things like med packs. You can build all kinds of weapons, different armors, satellites, which you can then deploy on mission control to have a, a, a better view on the world and protection on the world. There are the laboratories. The player can build these out and really speed up the rate at which uh, research progresses. Then you have the barracks, and this is where you do the promotion of your soldiers and the customization of your soldiers. We have the officer training school, and that gives big uh, squad-wide tactical benefits to your soldiers. Then you have the hangar, which is another, another static facility, and that's where you manage your interceptor jets and give them different weapon loadouts. You can even eventually upgrade the interceptor itself. Uh, there are workshops, which um, also speed up the rate that manufacturing progresses. So those are the static rooms that, that you're going to see in the beginning of the game, and, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. You can then excavate deeper and add dozens of different room types below these static rooms. We have the foundry, which is an upgrade center for, you can upgrade how your weapons work, you can create all new items for your soldiers to use. It's sort of like the one-stop upgrade center for your troops. You can capture a live alien and place them in the alien containment facility and see them sort of just pissed off in the, in, the, in the containment facility. You can see a muton banging on the glass or a sectoid trying to somehow mine merge his way out of, out of the containment facility. All of these facilities have um, adjacency bonuses, as we call them. It really matters not only what you build, but where you build it. Uh, certain facilities get bonuses for being built next to each other. You may get uh, rebates on materials if all your workshops are built together, or you may get more power out of your power generators if they're built um, horizontally. The way you build your base definitely has an effect on your play style, on the way that the uh, game progresses. Um, if you really want to research items quickly, if you have uh, a lot of things exposed in the tech tree and you want to you wanna study all these different artifacts, you may want to build a lot of laboratories. When you defeat aliens, you're going to bring back resources to your base, right, from the mission. So then you can bring these resources to the scientists in the science lab. Science labs is, is, is the first room that players will probably learn about. They can bring these resources that they got on the battlefield, might not know exactly what they are, but this is sort of where the magic of the tech tree unfolds, and you can start researching these different things from combat. Eventually, as you research them, you'll then be able to build these items in engineering. At the same time, if you want to build a lot of new armors, a lot of new weapons for your troops, if you want to outfit your soldiers, you may want to focus on workshops. It's always this trade-off. Those who really want to excel tactically, you're going to want the officer training school immediately. But when you spend money there, you're not spending money in the foundry to upgrade the different vehicles, the different weapons and armor. Um, and in true XCOM fashion, you're not going to build every one of these things. You simply can't. So you sort of have to focus and specialize, and you're never going to have enough money or enough manpower or enough power or enough space to build all these facilities at once. So every time you play, it's sort of this different mix of facilities, and that can change the way the game progresses.